In this relatively short lesson, I'd like to just touch on the type of equitable remedies that we can find within land law. So as we know, in the last few lessons, we've been looking at the distinction between uh, legal interests in land and equitable interests in land. And there's also legal remedies in land as well as equitable remedies in land. And this video, we're going to talk about equitable remedies in land. We're going to talk about what the characteristics are and specifically the two main types of equitable remedies. These are injunctions and specific performances. OK, so as an introduction, uh, we know already that equity doesn't just create new interests in land something we looked at in the last lesson, but it also creates new remedies. And so in this lesson, we're going to discuss these remedies. And just like with interests, equitable remedies came about due to the inadequacies of the common law. So really, equity fills in the gaps that the common law leaves out. That's what we know from uh, our understanding of equity. So what are the types of um, equitable remedies that we can find in land? Well, there are two specific types of equitable remedies in land. We have specific performance. OK, generally, an order of specific performance requires someone to do something. So it requires someone to do an act. OK, and an example of a specific performance may be performing a contract to transfer uh, an estate in land. OK, so the performance, the specific performance is to perform the contract. So perform. Perform the contract. Whatever the contract may or may not be. The second kind of uh, equitable remedy in land, as we've just mentioned, is one called uh, an injunction. So an injunction tends to be the opposite of a specific performance. Whereas a specific performance um, requires, compels one to do something, a, an injunction will forbid someone from doing something. And so we find ourselves, in uh, when we look at equitable remedies of land, we find ourselves distinguishing between a specific a specific performance, an order of specific performance, and an injunction. We find ourselves at the crossroads between these two, um, these two um, different things. And one refers to an act, an obligation to do something, and one refers to an obligation not to do something, to forbid something. Finally, what I want to do is talk about the characteristics of equitable remedies. Generally, when one uh, fails to comply with one of the remedies, so if somebody is, uh, you know, issued an injunction or you know issued an order of specific performance, and they fail to do that thing, they fail to comply with it, they can be found in contempt of court. And moreover, really, equitable remedies are available at the discretion of the court, and this is very important. Okay. There is no, there's not generally a, a, a specific codified guideline for, um, you know, for the, you know, for the, for the creation of equitable remedies, for the, for the granting of an equitable remedy. The point is that it's at the discretion of the court to decide where uh, a remedy, the, the inequity, uh, would be uh, necessary. So the court decides. So the court, the court decides. Uh, where a remedy uh, is necessary, where a remedy is uh, necessary. Okay. Now, the question you have to ask then is, um, how does the court decide where a remedy is necessary? Well, the question really is, uh, you know, how how is this how is this done? And the answer is that. The court will use equitable remedies in a way that is conscience driven. So the point, as we know, between equity and common law is that the common law can sometimes be unjust. OK, it can or it can provide unfair um, results, um, you know, just due to the, you know, due to its, its legal regime. And so equity steps in in a conscience driven manner to try and um, fill in the gaps and to try and produce just and uh, equitable outcomes. And so when we have equitable remedies, they have to be used at the discretion of the court and they also have to be conscience driven. In the next lesson, what we're going to do is look at um, distinguishing between illegal and equitable uh, 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 interests in land 
by looking at what it takes for something to be in legal interest in land. We're going to look at the Law of Property Act and then we're going to look at um, the sort of extra requirements that are needed for there to be a legal interest in land.